This is mangy, and mangy means business. Oh, he does. Oh yeah, dude. It's it's anything that's near him. Uh, he wants to address it. He's incredibly defensive. So what he's doing, he's he's being challenged to actually having a reasonable thought because he is an imported animal. He's wild caught. He could easily watch your friggin' hands. Yep. Because he's got see all those. Uh, things on his lower lip, those sense heat, and so he can just blast your hand. And what would a bite feel like? Uh, okay, so this, he has incredibly huge teeth. <laughs> and uh, he, like, I don't want to even pick him up because he'll bite me, no matter what I do. And I usually make friends, <laughs> look at him, <laughs> give me a mangy. He's like, so what you try to do, you just try to touch him. I just trying to touch him to let him know it's okay. But he's really into anything near him. He bites the water. He bites. Oh. Oh, he smudges cameras. Mangy. Why are you so upset? He's spaghetti. Super, super upset. So this is definitely one of those animals that you can try to socialize, but you're never going to get him to the level, I believe that I have with my other ones because he doesn't even give me an opportunity. So instead of getting him into thinking modes, remember my whole uh, threads of trust, animals, these animals, I, I view them living in modes. And if you assess the modes, you're, you're far better shape when you're in act, interacting with these animals. So we have sleeping mode. We have, I wanna get food, so maybe a big retic. You know, when you go into that cage, it thinks it's food time. You have to make sure you recognize that mode and you put that animal into thinking mode. And then we have fear mode. The best interactions with these animals is going to be thinking mode. And they're going to have little interactions with you. And as long as you leave it positive, they take that information and they download it. And then that starts changing their behaviors and their interactions and their anticipation of what's gonna happen between you and the animal. When it's in a fear mode and you're, think, you're dealing with that animal, in fear mode, you're sometimes creating a negative thread and then that thread is gonna instill further uh, non-trust. Like this animal, just touching it, it, it wants to bite my hook. Now, are these just like little warning strikes or does she play for keeps? Oh, he plays for keeps. Wow. Have you had a close call yet? Uh, yeah. And you're gonna come up the hook. Look, it's thinking about biting the hook. Oof, and man. Yeah, see? Oh man, I'm ready to go. Oh, Mangy is ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Mangy, well, so now we're taking Mangy outside of Mangy's comfort zone because we're putting Mangy on the floor. All I wanna do is just put Mangy into another cage. And one thing with my hand, Right here. Oh, oh yeah, see how I'm got your hand. Dude, went from my hand instead yeah. of that hand. Yes, because this hand isn't warm. Ah. Do you want to see what happens if I warm it up? Yeah, warm it up, man. Good idea. But Mangy will bite me in a second. My warm hand is is absolute a trigger for this this snake. And I'm assuming that's what's slowing down the whole socialization process. I can't I can't get my hands near it. So I try to as soon as I touch Mangy, immediately come swinging around and then like Loses his mind. If you put the, the misters on, Mangy's biting the air, doing all that. So Mangy maybe has had a bad experience in his life. Uh, I don't know because Mangy is an imported animal, wild caught animal, but you know, I have a group of emeralds. I'm trying to establish them because my objective is captive bred offspring. Uh, I have a lot of other wild caught emeralds that I've made friends with, a lot of them, and they're good. I can literally pick them up and move them around. They have incredibly huge teeth. Huge. Ooh. Right there. So he didn't even. I got it. And that's just. That's and that's all defensive bites. So that would be the most minimal bite from this animal. The worst bite would be uh, two males fighting or grabbing and latching onto its food. These are just like, hey, you're you're basically violating my 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 space. But if this is my hand, this is exactly what happens. And what's nice about this rubber hand is. It doesn't hurt Mangy's mouth. Mangy went from here and do it. So if I go, oh Mangy, I just, I didn't want to be friends, Mangy. But this actually is kind of teaching Mangy. It can be touched without 
something horrible happening. And this is uh, what we do often to socialize venomous. And you just get them used to being touched because obviously touching a venomous animal, you're endangering yourself and also the reputation of other keepers and what people think of venomous animals being you know, kept as pets. This is progress right here. Yeah, this is actually okay. So now, so what we have right here, tongue flicks. The tongue flicks are coming out. So Mangy's thinking. If this animal wasn't doing tongue flicking, uh, I still think it's mostly in a defensive mode, but we're now in a thinking mode. Uh, Mangy's just uh, assessing. Oh, that, that is, these are just light, light, light uh, defensive bites. He or she. Uh, actually, you know what? I don't even know what sex Mangy is right here. So Mangy's just trying to figure it out. This is good. See, like just, just who's touching me? What's going on? There you go, Mangy. Good. This is getting touched. Nothing bad's happening. Mangy's thinking. Uh, Mangy's. <laughs> I would no way do this with my hand because. And so what I'm just going to do is I'm going to use the hook, hopefully. They use the hook right. I'm trying to get, <laughs> I'm trying to get to Mangy's tail. If Mangy Hi, Mangy. Bites you, is that a teachable moment? Yeah, it's okay. all teachable. <laughs> okay. Hey, Mangy. Can I see you? All right. Whoosh. Oh, yeah. Ooh, man, that was close. All right. Yeah. Mangy is just, just, I just want to see your tail. That's it. Now, what are you looking for? In the I'm looking at the tail. <laughs> okay, so Mangy's a girl. Mangy's a girl. Yeah. All right, good. That's good. Mangy. So what I want to do now, we're going to put Mangy in her other cage. Come here, baby. Look at that. She, oh, she, okay, so I'm going to pick you up. And, you know, sometimes they say, you know, this is like getting your yayas out. Let Mangy realize being touched Nothing hurts Mangy. It certainly puts Mangy in a defensive state, but showing that Mangy can be touched without something bad happening. All right, so we're going to put Mangy in cage. Mangy's looking to bite bad. Where are we going? Ooh. Right behind you. Just like a venomous, you can handle on by the tail. You use your hook. So let's get Mangy to go into the cage. Mangy wants to... We'll let Mangy set up for a couple minutes. Uh, let's go look. Let's go look at a couple other emeralds. Okay. So I'm kind of staying out of the, the bite range, and what I'm doing is I'm teaching her this this little episode. Nothing bad. Nothing bad at all. And then I remove myself, and that's it. So you have this snake. Thinking mode, real good. Now, Kevin, is this something you do like daily? I, I do it. I do it kind of frequently. I just kind of interact, and then you have the freedoms. Long tongue flight, really good. Everything's okay. Everything's good. And these are captive. I mean, these are wild. That, that's that's captive. Oh, that's captive. Total captive. Okay. okay. So, this one's shedding. Hi. So first, first with these guys, you want to go under that chin. Get yourself out of that. Why do you go from under the chin? Well, if you go right where the mouth is, right there, you can get nailed. But what you're doing is just having this little, little short little episode. So this animal is really still kind of in like a uh, real quiet mode. See, so the eyes are opaque. Opaque. I can't even speak. So the eyes. I don't know why I just said that. The eyes are opaque. Mm -hmm. So this animal is just kind of like I want to be quiet. I want to be left alone. So we'll go to another snake. Right here. So they're sleeping right now. So we are in sleep mode. Sometimes when you mess with the snake, they'll wake up and then come right after their food. So what I'm gonna do, hi. Hi. Yeah. 
Soren. Thank you, Mud. So I can trigger this animal. Right now, this animal is going, oh, I want to be a little defensive. So I move myself. That's good. I'm giving Kevin behind hugs. That's what <laughs> Let's see you. Hi. And then one might be going opaque. Two. Hi, hi. No tongue flicks yet. So we're like, ooh, like what's going on? The eye, you see the eye moving back and forth. Now we get the tail kind of curled up. So this animal is a little worried about me. No tongue flicks. But I'm doing all this tactile stuff. Look at that. That's a worried animal. Captive or wild caught? That's wild caught. Would you say this is pretty good for a wild caught animal? She's, yeah, this is all. Okay, there we go. Now the tongue. We just went into thinking mode. Just went into thinking mode. Back a little bit defensive. Watch that tongue. Here we go. So now what she's doing is she's just assessing. Like, okay, what's what's happening? Nothing bad is happening. So this animal doesn't need to bite. I can literally take this animal off its perch. There we go, think mode. So this is still pretty passive. I haven't taken this animal off its perch or anything. So we'll go to another one. So here I have a snake that just shed. Okay. Okay, so this snake is totally sleeping. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wake it up. Hi. They'll often just hide their heads. So their their pupils are in the dark essentially. Hi. Can I see you? Here we go. Hey, baby. There we go. We're right into think mode. Okay. Right. So if I want to keep working with this animal. See, you watch for that tongue to go down. Okay. And I'm taking it slow. So I'm wait I just woke this snake up. I'm just taking it slow. I'm gonna peel you off your perch. I don't do anything to trigger it. What I don't let it do, see it's a little defensive right there, because I can't blame it. I'm just gonna show you. Come here. Getting the tail off. There we go. All right. Slow. And this is still passive handling. Kevin's now holding a wild caught animal. Yeah, this, this is, is one of my, I mean, it's, it's been around for quite some time, but. So this animal, long tongue flick, I'm getting up. So right there, when it just did that, started pointing down. That is at the trigger point where I'm starting to, you know, just kind of take that animal out of its comfort zone. All right, so there you go. That just did that thing. It knows it's down. It's, it, it's yeah, hard. it just did that. And it's reacting to my ta tactile touch. There's, you're blasting in the face with your focus, your infrared. Mm -hmm. And I'm, my hand's warm, okay? So I just kinda, kinda work the animal. But this is good. So this is a little short interaction at this point. Everything is good. This animal is not, I haven't pushed this animal too much. Long tongue flicks, and now I'm gonna return it to its cage. So one thing that's very, very important, when you are socializing an animal and you are returning to its cage or you're removing yourself from its cage, you want to end it on a positive note. So this animal freaking out and racing into the cage 
would be bad. So I'm, I would be building a bad thread, but this is a positive thread. Uh, emerald tree bows are known not to tolerate a lot of interaction and handling, certainly at least imported animals. So what we're doing here, when the animal's going back to the cage, it's going on a very kind of calm note. So I'm standing in front of my emerald tree boa bank, which I'm really excited about. These are cages I designed and I work with Reptile Basics. Rich is super good guy, uh, great to work with, and we've designed some cages. So I designed the cages. Rich has uh, the technology, CNC tables and whatever, the rudder tables, that he can actually bring my ideas to fruition. And then I create these cages for years and years. I always like qualify, this is good, this isn't good, da 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 da. So I'm always trying to improve uh, the way I take care of it. And I kind of want to come up with like the smart caging. So I'm going to show you a couple things about this caging in particular. Go, go to our link in the description for Reptile Basics. They sell all sorts of cutting edge pro series stuff. Uh, I'm a big supporter of ZooMed, um, big supporter of uh, Reptile Basics, animal plastics. They make great caging, whatnot. So the idea of this caging is I have three different size perches. I have a spray head in the back. You can see that's actually Reptile Basics 40 watt heat panel. And the heat panel projects heat downward. So it is projecting it because there's insulation behind it. So the primary heat spots are here and right here. Let me tell you another thing. When you are socializing animals, if I went over and just touched this animal too rapidly, you're not giving the animal uh, what it needs, which is just a little chance. Like I do, like soft touches, and this is even works with rattlesnakes and whatever. So when you are interacting with a, a, a rattlesnake and you let it meet a hook, you give it a chance for it to think. And you just don't want to surprise these guys. So back to this. So three different size perches. Then I have a little water holder right here. Yeah. And this this just changes the water. I can just dump it out. This goes between two perches. Right like that. Okay? So this spray head is I can just put this there and that spray head over time is going to fill up that water dish and I can just keep dumping them. Uh, then I also have another thing right here. See that little nozzle, Donnie? Yeah. That's an air pump. So the air pumps are off right now. And what uh, emerald tree boas do, emerald tree boas uh, need ventilation. So up in the canopy, it is super humid. It rains a lot, but they also have a lot of like wind and breezes. And that prevents them from getting really dank and wet. If you take an emerald tree bow and you keep it wet all the time, you're going to fail. Bacterial problems, uh, bacterial lesions, you'll get fungal lesions. And once that begins to happen, it declines uh, the quality of that animal's life. That animal fails to thrive. So I believe ventilation, but humidity. So what I can do with uh, the mist system is I can turn that on, have it rain on them essentially, uh, which er uh, it basically gets them drinking. So they're being touched with water and a lot of times they're drinking the water off their coils. I've actually had animals I've soaked in a bin, make sure it's hydrated. I put it in the cage. And then I notice when I turn on the mist system, it drinks further. Emerald tree boas and green tree pythons and certainly other uh, arboreal species are often tied in with exactly how they evolved and being rained on and then using that for their water to drink is just, it's part of that animal's being. So I try to kind of work with that because I've noticed Sometimes these emerald tree boas do not understand what water dishes are. And uh, when you're feeding these and they're dehydrated, you're going to uh, often have regurgitation problems and whatnot. So having the animal super, super hydrated so it can actually digest its food because digestion for all these reptiles is incredibly taxing. They go through a massive physiological change when they're doing that. So I have a little air pump right here and it blows a little bit of air. I have ventilation up here, I have ventilation here, wherever. And what happens is I can get this whole system to spray, get wet, the water then drains away. You'll happen to notice on it, look at the floor of the cage. It's it, angled, right? It's angled and there's no bedding. No bedding. So oh, what, what happens? So what happens? The bedding, so this is not bioactive, the bedding then uh, absorbs all the moisture, it gets gross, 
uh, if it if you can't let it drain. So I've decided to go with this angled floor. This would actually be great if I wanted to uh, put like poison arrow frogs in here. I build the subfloor. The angled floor would allow all the water that I'm raining on to go through and then there's a drain and then it goes out. So one thing we're going to do is we're going to actually come up with uh, like nerd, uh, what are we going to call these? I don't know. Nerd uh, Pro or Smart Cages, whatever it is. So we're going to um, come up with some caging. So I'm working with Rich Reptile Basics. So you could actually get one of these cages that has all the perching cutouts. It has the angled floor. But for uh, individual cage, it would actually have a drawer underneath it. So all your water goes into that drawer. You can take that. You can vacuum it out with the shop vac. You can dump it away. But you can keep poison arrow frogs. You can keep Europlatus, leaf-tailed geckos. You can keep uh, leeches. Uh, uh, so many different things. Obviously, emerald tree boas, green tree pythons, frogs. These cages would be ideal for frogs. Here, take a look at this, Donnie. Oh, the gutter. I helped you uh, put some of these in. Yeah, look at you. Yeah, look it's at this. Gutter. So, that gutter, everything drains down a gutter and then out. And right there, so. Yeah. Nice. And it, and it goes. So, if you actually look at the whole run. All the way down. So, that whole thing will drain down. And this room ultimately is gonna be emerald tree boas and Bolin's pythons. We are changing a lot of the animals we're keeping. I am definitely downsizing the number of my animals or the poundage of my, my animals I am working on decreasing. Uh, I'm going to start focusing on my projects that I really, that are the things that I really wanna do. And uh, I just, you know, kinda of re-envision things. Foam. And uh, emerald tree boas, I love bones pythons. Who, who couldn't love them? But I, I love those too. And I want to be able to walk into these these rooms and have a little bit of peace. So open a lock on the door. Yeah. I'll turn on the air pump. Yeah. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. I'm just gonna do it in this open enclosure because there's more yeah. space. Oh, see, so it doesn't really spray very hard. No. So. So did, you were talking about a positive pressure, it pushes it up to the top? So what it actually does is we create a positive pressure, so we're pumping into the cage. So the cage is missed for a while, maybe an hour, and depends whatever I want to do. And then uh, it could be you know 15 minutes, whatever, whatever it is. Uh, during the night, if you do it, uh, you get the animals active and moving, so you might miss them, and then two hours later you go to feed them, and they're on point. So uh, a couple things about these cages are, I have this heat panel and I'm trying to get a couple hot spots right here. This cage has nine perches that I can figure. And the water dish can go in between here if you want to do that. You can put a plant. I'm going to move this bottom perch out about an inch so I can actually, you can put like a potted plant. You can hang a potted plant. Uh, I've noticed and when I have this many animals, they often will like poop behind things and stuff like that. It makes it a little bit hard. Here's an emerald tree bow that's drinking. Oh yeah, that's a good job. Okay. That animal, what it's doing, it's collecting the water. The water is going down its body oh. and oh. it will collect it on its... Oh yeah, look at that. On its lip. And it will just sit there and just drink. And they don't drink fast. This is a long, long process. Uh, so that animal, you could spray it for a while and uh, it's still drinking. And so if I just went and go with my spray head. Yeah. Like one of our customers that dehydrated their animal and almost Well, that, that's, yeah, we did have that kind of thing. But you know, look, I'm learning. This is all further, further learning of, of what, what's going on. All right, guys, thank you actually for taking the time and actually watching the whole video. Uh, one thing I always worry about, if I give you too much information, people get bored and stuff like that. So uh, I guess I'm going to bore you. But I do want to show you guys things. I want to teach you guys how to uh, maybe improve your methodology of your keeping because of all the mistakes this guy makes. I make a lot of mistakes. I'm learning, forever trying to improve what I do. Uh, but I would like to, you know, obviously benefit animals. I love animals. I am... 100 billion percent an animal lover i'm just a hobbyist just like you guys but i do need your support i need your interest and i have a lot of people that are really wonderful to me that are super excited to meet me i don't know why but i appreciate it and i appreciate you guys thank you
gonna turn my camera on, dude. You didn't turn your camera on! <laughs>